Somebody once told me the world is gonna... Hello everyone, let's talk about the final project that is due on week 15. The earlier you get done, the better. Um, I do recommend that. Due to the sheer amount of work that this project requires, I do suggest you break it up into chunks, as uh, if you wait until the final week to try to do everything all at once, it is nearly impossible to complete without brain damage. I do recommend that you do break it up into chunks. Here I am in Blackboard looking at the written description for what is due our final project. We can see here that it does say at this point, do week 15 before your lab section. Uh, this is important. I am still seeing students hand in projects that are not 11 inches by 14 inches, especially if the first image you use to create your mood board is a photograph. Uh, oftentimes people will create a mood board using that photograph dimension. So when you start your project, make sure you create a new artboard first, save it with your name on it, Make sure it's 11 by 14 inches at 300 dpi. This will be a combo PDF with your mood board, color board, flats and croquis, and line sheets from Excel. Make sure your Word document is uploaded separate. Do not embed the Word document into the PDF. I do want a separate Microsoft Word document. Did I mention I want a separate Microsoft Word document? Here are the details that's expected for your project Four. Okay, and then the Word document as I sent to you an email earlier this week. Uh, get it done. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell just now. I just care so much about all of you, and I don't want to see you struggle at the very end, the time of year where you will be pushing your computers to their limits. Now that you're at home and maybe your laptop is on the floor or on the bed, please get it off the floor, get it off the bed, put it on a desk where you have some good airflow. We do not want your computer overheating and having a catastrophic failure. Every semester I get one or two students uh, who tries to do everything in one night. Uh, they have Photoshop open, they have Illustrator open, they have Word open, they have their browser open, they have maybe a chat client, maybe they're streaming music, I don't know, but then the computer just decides to say, you know what, I don't like you, I'm going to leave this world forever and take all of your data with it. So please don't let that happen. I want you to save early, save often, do your work in chunks. Let's try to avoid catastrophic failure. Let's look at some examples here. We have a student uh, for our final project. The first page will be your intro page. It'll have the name of your global trend, the season. I don't want anything that says 2020 spring, summer. The earliest we can do is autumn, winter 2020. Put your name on the slide. Uh, make sure all the slides look visually consistent with each other and are the same size. You see here we have the student going from 11 by 14 to maybe 8.5 by 11. I do like the way these pictures are arranged. They have some drop shadow. It is kind of a nice arrangement. Looks like some thought was put into here. And here we have the mood board. Grid style layout, which is perfectly fine. If you wanted to do that, make sure uh, this is the only type of format I will accept straight edges in your photographs. I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, here's an example of a color board. Make sure your patterns, we see the motifs repeating at least three times on the vertical or horizontal. I'd like to see the patterns named. I don't want to have the swatches or the words pushed up against the border of the artboard, so be careful of that. Uh, we have our color story, uh, clever name, plus a Pantone code, and our two fabrics labeled. That would be great. Here we have uh, flats and croquis on the same artboard. They do not need to be on the same artboard. You can have both your croquis on one artboard or all your flats on the other or a variety of different layouts. It's up to you. Make sure that all of the slides are visually consistent with each other. Here we have some great detail. I like to see the interior fills being a darker version of the exterior color. If you need help with that, let me know. I'll make another video. Three sets of flats, black and white, front, back, and one with a pattern fill from your color story. Make sure one of your croquis is wearing a one piece, one of your croquis is wearing two pieces, and make sure one of the garments, it doesn't matter which one, has a pattern fill. I also want to see a reference page that you use for anything that you traced. If you traced a photograph, make sure those photographs are on your reference page. If you use flats from WGSN to trace, make sure those flats appear on your reference page. I would like to see the photograph you used to create your color story as a mosaic on your reference page as well. And if you are tracing, you should also have a close-up face that you traced and a reference 
corresponding reference photo on your research page as well. Here we have another example of a final presentation. We have the intro page with the title and season. Uh, name is nice. Second page we have uh, key takeaways. You can have as few or as many takeaway points as you like. The student decided to put all of her inspiration images and her takeaways on the same slide. You can separate that or you can add it all together. It's up to you. Mood board here, interesting shapes cut out. The patterns do have the motifs repeating, that is good. And everything from the patterns, the fabrics, and color stories are all labeled. Uh, this is her mood board. This is her croquis and flats all on the same page. I do like to see details like stitches. I do like to see shading on the croquis. I do like to see some lines indicating volume. Uh, interior fills, again, darker versions of the exterior color. The student used uh, a hand drawn that she did in pencil as her reference for her tracing. If you do use a hand drawing for live trace or tracing with a pen tool, as well as your close-up picture, I do want both those pictures on your reference page. Another nice example of a presentation, we have our opening splash page. The student decided to put her key takeaways on the opening splash page along with her global trend and with the season. 10 points for the correct size artboard. 10 points for including your global trend and your season. 10 points for layout. It has to look cohesive and it has to look somewhat professional, not a bunch of haphazard images thrown on here. This is her mood board. It's abstract. Everything's nicely cut out. I see no straight edges. If, uh, if the images are not high resolution, that can be up to 35 points off. Five points for each low resolution image, so make sure you do find high resolution images. I don't want to see hard edges on the photographs unless you are doing a grid layout. Here's the color board. Lovely. Motifs repeating three times along the horizontal. Pantone codes. I don't want to see flats pushed up against the edge of the artboard. I thought this was at first, but then I realized she has a dark black, uh, dark gray rectangle as an accent. The actual edge of the artboard is out here, so this is fine. But uh, if this were the edge of the artboard, that would be points off. So be careful with that. These do look nice. I am seeing um, a lack of stitch detail. I do see some stitches along the hems here, which is nice, but go ahead and go crazy with the stitches. The more stitches, uh, the more, the bigger the guarantee you'll have a good grade on your flats portion. Here's a great reference page that she used, a hand-drawn croquis that she traced, threw into image trace, and then brought into Illustrator and colored. You will have to use Excel to create your spec sheet for the final project. Uh, it consists of basically a large area where you have a traced flat used with Illustrator, and this area is entered into the cells with Excel. I will be making another video uh, with a step-by-step -step process on how to make this uh, shortly. Here's the rubric for the final project. Board size, if it's 11 by 14 inches, that's 10 points. Layout, as long as it looks professional and it's not haphazard, that's 10 points. The mood board itself uh, and the fabrics board, 50 points apiece. Uh, the mood board must look professional, at least five images. The font used must reflect the theme and season. The color board must look professional. It has to have a visual cohesiveness between the two boards. The theme and season displayed, five color swatches with the names and Pantone codes included, patterns, and fabrics as well. Your croquis and flats, two croquis, they have to be consistent in look, must look professional. They must be wearing garments, a top and a bottom and a one piece. One of the one pieces needs to have prints. Your word document, a thousand words, APA style. We have a cover page, a APA styled body with at least three, three in-text citations. APA styled reference page and a URL page. I also want to see a reference page using uh, that displays all of the images that you used to trace. If you traced WGSN flats, if you traced a photograph, you are welcome to use photographs from anywhere you can find, including ones you take with your camera. They do not have to specifically come from WGSN. And we will have a spec sheet, which I will be making a video shortly. All right, get to work. I'd like to see your mood board and color board done by next week. Start finding your images for your flats and croquis, and please get it done. Please, please start early.
Start early. Start now. Please. Okay. Bye.